scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Open my eyes, let me see. Will you open my eyes, let me see. Is my prayer, Lord, will you open my eyes, let me see. You're the light of the world, you step down into darkness, open my eyes. The Bible says the kingdom, please understand, that the kingdom of God is akin to a treasure, a lost coin. Are we together? That a man is holding a treasure in form of a coin and then it is missing in a room. And the first thing he does is to look for light. Light and then a broom. And he began to sweep that room and he found that coin that is missing. The coin is in the room. But it doesn't mean you can see it so he had to light a lamp and then search for it the truths that we're looking for are not missing they are not far but it will take the illumination of the spirit it says in your light we see light are we blessed already matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 blessed be the name of the lord matthew 16 and verse 19 jesus is still teaching and Jesus makes a very interesting statement and says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. So the kingdom is akin to a house with many doors. Each room controlling dimensions of spiritual possibilities. And he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven let me tell you the difference very quickly between the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god represents every sphere where the influence of god can reach that includes the heaven of heavens that includes the earth that includes hell where can i hide from your presence so the kingdom of God represents everywhere the sphere of God's government, God's influence can extend to. And that is everywhere. But the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of God where the governing influence of the Christ in experience has been allowed to find expression. That is what is called the kingdom of heaven. Are we blessed? Yes. Remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is done in heavens. So heaven represents God's idea, God's portrait. Everywhere can become heaven when what is done in heaven is done there. Are we together now? Yes. So the kingdom of heaven represents every sphere. I give you an instance. 
the entire country nigeria as a federal republic is called the federal republic of nigeria is that true so from sambisa to to uh, uh Maiduguri to Lagos to Port Harcourt, it's all the property of the federal government but there are still portions of this nation that are under contention are we together there are groups of individuals for instance down north Sambisa who are attempting to lay claim on the sovereignty of the nation it is now the assignment of the army to stamp the fact that it is a federal republic so you cannot necessarily call Sambisa for now a place that is fully under the influence of the government of Nigeria. But it should be, but it is not. So it says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled, not everywhere, is settled in a particular domain of your kingdom. Our assignment, therefore, is that it be done in earth as it is done. And the first earth is you. This earthen vessel that it be done in you first before your territory. Are we blessed? And so he says to achieve that, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And that with those keys, whatsoever thou shalt bind. Now this has brought a lot of controversy in the body of Christ. Whether it is bound in heaven first or bound in earth. And that's not our subject of discussion now. That whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever thou shalt lose. The word bind and lose is not a demonic word. It's just a word that means to authorize or to hinder, to prohibit or to allow. That there are keys that a man can possess that grants you authority to open and shut doors. Hallelujah. Fear dies when you hold keys. When you stand before a door and you do not have the key, you will be afraid. But once you possess the key, there is no need for fear again. Are we together now? So God is, by this teaching, not only bringing us to a point of revelation and dominion, but he's taking away fear. Did you know that many people, medical people here would tell you that even young people today, the sheer level of stress and all kinds of psychological problems that come as a result of fear fear of the future will i prosper will i die no god cannot design an intelligent god cannot design people to live in that level of of um that that level of of uncertainty i'm no longer slave to fear I am a child of God. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. You don't see now asking, will I be blessed? Will people favor me? Will Lagos open up for me? And you are just hoping. Let me tell you, the, the way many believers live, people should not be born again watching you. Because the, the way you live is they are better off living based on their own philosophies. The haphazardness, the gaps in our conviction is too much. There must be a level of certainty. 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 Can I be sure that you will be blessed? Or do we just hope and watch what happens? That's terrible. Can I be sure ministry will grow? Or will, well, let's try and see. No, we are not, we're not working with probabilities. This is a God that is exact. Very exact. The challenge many times is we do not have the keys. Or we do not know how to use the key. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible tells us that there are mysteries called the keys of the kingdom. Luke eleven fifty two. 52. That these keys represent a body of truth. A body of truth. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Please let's read it if you can see it. One to read. 
woe unto you lawyers uh-huh for you have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourself and them that were entering you hindered so the keys of the kingdom are the keys of knowledge there is an exact body of truth allocated for the victory of the saints please understand this not every spiritual information is necessary and responsible for your growth just because it is spiritual in context does not mean it is useful that's why the bible speaking says i have many things to tell you now he says but ye cannot bear them how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible mandates the holy spirit to guide the saints into all truth that means he will select the truths that are applicable to your life and destiny there's a lot of useless spiritual knowledge that has no place as far as the victory of the saints is concerned ever learning the bible says but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so we must be careful just because an information is scarce you are privy to a scarce spiritual information does not mean you have authority so we continue to brag around a lot of useless spiritual information respectfully speaking and most of them do not sustain the ability to reveal and glorify christ in our lives there are many people for instance who have been around the airport for nine years ten years they've never flown but they are there they can show you every room they can show you they can show you a way to get the ticket even if you don't have another you they they understand all the skill but they have never in experience entered a plane now that's a very frustrating experience they snap around it they talk around it they draw it they tell you what conference is happening in the airport but they never leave many believers are like that I know God can restore they say I know God can give speed believe me the other day they testified in my presence I'm making you angry this morning for a reason because you see until you are provoked you will not be tired of where you are it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night my Bible says only to eat the bread of sorrow it is only God that can give his beloved sleep. So when we sustain this dimension of intelligence, then you will open these doors. Why will the doors be open? Because like we shared yesterday, the treasures are within. And once you open those doors, you can access those things. Let me tell you this. I believe in results. Oh, I really believe in results. The end of all argument is results results have a convincing power we were not designed to use only words to convince when moses spoke a little he stopped talking let the rod continue speaking if all you use is your voice and your mouth alone you are not doing much there must be something about your life that keeps talking even when you are silent hallelujah that you can demonstrate to people that this god is alive ah. i looked around and suddenly realized that you've been so good to me your mercies are everlasting undeniable overwhelmed who am I that you are mindful of me? who am I when I call you who am I that you are mindful of me that would be your testimony ah. here's a secret the source of my strength you're the strength of my life my hope and my joy my confidence you're the source of my strength the strength of my life my hope and my joy you're my confidence I exalt you, oh Lord. The psalmist 
said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Then he asked a question, whence cometh my help? Other people have many ways they outsource help. He says, as for me, my help. I can't generalize it, but my help cometh from the Lord. Listen, the maker. The Lord is not only a builder, he is the maker. It's not only heaven and earth that he makes, he makes men too the lord the maker like you see a man and say this man is made oh that when men are made he is called the lord the maker the maker of anointed men the maker of prosperous men the maker of men under open heavens and open doors the maker hallelujah so there is an exact body of truth please do not forget this please do not forget this everything in the kingdom is controlled by knowledge the keys that open door are a specific body of truth look up please there is an exact body of knowledge that controls the economic system of the kingdom the economic system of the kingdom is not haphazard it is controlled by exact specific knowledge that can be understood and their operation can be scientific there is a synergy there is a sequence there is repeatability two words is very interesting in that scripture it says my people my people four verse six hosea my people my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shall no longer be a priest a priest is a mediator a representative you cannot represent me because you do not sustain my knowledge my viewpoint knowledge is very powerful believers hear me knowledge is very powerful there is a lot there is a lot of um, ignorance and then there is a lot of guessing let me tell you this the challenge sincerely speaking with many believers is not that we are necessarily ignorant we have not studied the truths of the kingdom enough to know which is responsible for which results are we together yes so someone for instance let me have any gentleman anybody come my good friend again watch this this gentleman may be in trouble now and here's how his prayer will look like it will be a combination of the blood of jesus the fire of the holy ghost touching and agreeing communion are we together the name of jesus quoting his scripture now he is not even sure which should produce which result he just tries anyone and the danger is one will walk and if something works that you don't understand how the result came the Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully are we blessed yes so he just feels that there's a pain no in the name of Jesus I reject it then he takes communion wonderful he calls the name of Jesus he tells somebody he asked oh prophet prophesy now he does not even know that all these dimensions in the kingdom have specific outcomes there is what to do if you want to rise financially there is what to do when you are attacked there is what to do when you are making progress there is what to do when you are already successful which one do you not know it represents the door that stands closed before you i hope you are not offended that i'm pushing you a little because i want you to walk out of this place with confidence so you go back home and say see let's stop this nonsense we're doing sit down i know exactly what is wrong this this approach of random hoping that one will work uh -uh. based on this case this is the spiritual law that connects it read your bible every time people lost things only the prophetic restored business never restored anybody alas master for it was borrowed and the prophet said where fell it when the donkey was missing it was samuel that prophesied it back that means when you lose money when your company goes down there's no point sitting down and say we will start again you are going to go through the same experience the prophetic must be the ladder you climb first are you seeing just this this revelation is deliverance for many people
the bible says for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth it says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty there are laws in this kingdom that control specific outcomes apostle what i need is more of the anointing of the holy ghost in my life there are spiritual laws that govern the anointing desire is only one of them the bible says through desire proverbs 18 and verse 1 i think it says a man having separated himself he says seek it and intermeddleth with all wisdom but desire alone is not the key to him to impartation when your cup is empty it's a report card telling you that what is on your head is small the bible said thou anointest my head with oil and i see what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is empty the fault is not the cup the fault is not the business the fault is not the location i'm staying in lagos the fault is something that is not yet on my head are we together herbalists have all kinds of shrines and right from that shrine they've not felt a need to move anywhere people come from everywhere with their dignity and walk backward and go to the herbalist because he has something that is treasure there spiritual laws are powerful they control exact results longevity will not happen by hoping there are spiritual laws that are responsible. Now, please, if you've lost a loved one, don't feel bad. But we continue to mature through the supply of spiritual knowledge. Are we together now? This death you see that people fear. Death itself has a spirit. And there are people it fears. Because spirits, there is an emotional component to them. Truly, let me tell you. There are people who will pass death and death will pass them too. It is, not, it is not as vicious as we look. It is our ignorance that gives it that might. There are exact spiritual laws that control it. Pastor sir, the greatest need of believers is favor. As far as excelling in life is concerned, believe me when I tell you this. You can know whether the favor of God is upon your life or not. I hope you know that favor is not breakthrough. No. The difference between favor and breakthrough is the frequency of occurrence. If it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough. It must happen again and again regardless of surrounding circumstances. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. Please look up. Is someone learning something this morning? Exodus 3, 21. Please help us, media, and then we'll read it together. Proverbs, I mean, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. This is the biblical litmus test for favor. Ready? Please read. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Emptiness has an explanation financial emptiness emptiness in terms of support there is an explanation now notice the worst person to receive favor from is an egyptian because they will not bless israel yet when favor is on you even the egyptians cannot withdraw their resources towards you your relatives are even connected to you by blood why are they rejecting you when an egyptian that is not connected to an israelite act enemies still bless them overnight Is God speaking to us? And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. A body of exact spiritual truth that you will do business with and watch yourself transit from one dimension of grace to the other. That people look at your life and say, last week you were not like this. What happened between last week and this week? And you tell them two things. One, I came for a conference, a convention, and while I sat down, an information was supplied me and a grace came over me and with these twofold operations i went back and look my life now a testimony of wonder i hope you believe what i'm telling you it shall come to pass that when ye shall go 
you shall not go empty. Favor insists that you are not empty. It will shake people from the left and the right of any region to make sure you have all sufficiency. The Bible says God is able to make all grace abound towards us, he says, so that ye, having all sufficiency in all things, he says you will abound unto good works. It is impossible to do certain levels and dimensions of kingdom exploits when you are empty. Empty in your mind, empty in your hands. So when we talk about open doors, we're talking about keys that are controlled with knowledge. Knowledge. Having the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that is responsible for exact outcomes. Exact outcomes. Colossians 1 verse 9. Thank you. Colossians 1 and verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge, knowledge of his will. Number two, that ye might be filled with all wisdom. Number three, that ye might be filled with spiritual understanding. So it is important that we obtain knowledge. And this morning, the few minutes that I have, I just want to share with you two keys of the kingdom. I pray in the name of Jesus that someone will hold these keys and this afternoon, may it open doors for you. Please lay your hands on your head and cry in prayer. My understanding, open up, open up, open up. Please pray. Someone pray. The Labarusia Sabra de Diana Ravalava Raka Pahusia Sabarusia Tava. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of faith. Write it down. The first key of the kingdom we explore is the law of faith. Numbers 23 and verse 19, please. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Jesus. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you. Is there no one like you? No one like you, Father. No one like you, Master. You're the God of everything. No one like you. Listen now. Faith 
is a law in the spirit is a key that can open doors the bible says god is not a man he became a man but he's not a man god is not a man that he should lie it says nor the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it hath he spoken and shall he not make it good let me tell you what this means that means before god speaks he checks if he can do it that if god cannot do it he will not say it so everything god says he has checked within himself to find out whether the capacity to make it happen is there or not are we blessed faith listen faith is not believing believing is part of faith faith is not believing are we together now faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction about god and the integrity of his word the name given to the action you take as proof of your conviction conviction is not faith conviction leads to faith many people continue to say they have faith uh-uh conviction plus actions of obedience is what equals faith please understand this every dimension in the kingdom commits god at the instance of your faith your action not just your knowledge are we together now faith is very powerful Hebrews 11 starts by saying, now faith is the substance, he says, of things hoped for. It says the evidence, the tangibility of things not seen. Things not seen. Things not seen. That means, for instance, I have some money here. If, if you want a bottle of water and I give you a thousand naira, I did not give you water, but I gave you the substance of what you are hoping for this is the evidence that you have water you take it to the shop and exchange it nobody will ask you how old you are to buy the water nobody will say are you a male or female are you Igbo or Yoruba once you can bring this it can purchase that which you desire so that the everything on earth has a price tag are we together now and that faith is currency you can take it to the marketplace of life and exchange it for victory and exchange it for speed and exchange it for things that have no business coming into your life so that when you have faith you begin to rejoice that even though i have not built the house this is the money for the house it's called faith it's a spiritual currency that we transact with in the realm of the spirit it says by it the elders obtained a good report then the Bible begins to say, verse 3, through faith we understand. He's telling you the formation of the cosmos. He says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Those realities were already in existence in the realm of the spirit. The technology of their transportation to this realm was faith. That they were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Faith. The Bible, in several instances in Scripture, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, Romans 1 verse 17, Galatians 3 verse 11, Hebrews 10 38, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Everybody say it please. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 4, Romans 1 17 they all say the same thing Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 that in this kingdom the just lives by faith look at me please there are no earthly guarantees over anything there is no guarantee humanly speaking that you'll be successful there is no guarantee that an uncle will help you men can change I can promise you and say as soon as you finish come to me and one year before you finish I die I'm not bad I'm just human your destiny helper can relocate to America just when no guy
guarantee anywhere. Your guarantee is faith. Now, faith is an equation. And very quickly, I will run you through it. The first revelation of faith, the first or the first equation is an encounter with something God has said. The basis of faith is an encounter with something God has said. If God has not said it, there's no point believing it. It will not happen. It is only his word that controls realities. Remember, he upholds all things by the word of his power. So your journey to faith is first to find out what God has said. Even doubt comes based on what God has said. Satan wants to know what God has said. Are we together? So it's important for you to understand faith. What has God said? I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. What has God said? The path of the justice has a shining light. It shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. What has God said? If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity, their days in pleasure. What has God said? It's important for you to know what God has said concerning you, concerning your family. What has God said concerning your home? Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. What, God has, what has God said? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. Are we together now? And that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. This is what God has said. What has God said? Let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, the fowl of the air, over everything that creepeth. And in doing so, Hebrew says, he left nothing that was not under the subjection of man. Many believers do not know what God has said. That's why their faith. Faith is not built by reading newspapers and magazines, as important as they are. The basis of faith is what God has said. An encounter with the written word. An encounter with the spoken word. There are things that God told Pastor Amos Fenwa, for instance, about this ministry. It becomes the things that Luke chapter 1 tells us that there are things that are most surely believed. Most surely believed. There are things God told me that becomes the basis of my faith. He told Joshua, he said, no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. It's a revelation. So when the captain, the angel came, Joshua was going to remove his sword and kill him. If that angel did not explain, he would have been surprised. Because God's word already said, nobody will be able to stand against you. Who are you to come? There is a word that protects me. What has God told you? God told you if you come to Lagos, I will ensure you will not beg. Why are you begging? It means there is something about the word you've ignored. Listen, Satan only comes to you when the word comes. If the word does not come to you, he has no, there's nothing to fight. It was until God spoke to man when Satan came and met Eve. He said, what did God say? Not how are you? Not what do you want to eat? Not have you explored other trees? All I'm interested in is what did God say? The moment the father spoke over Jesus, Satan came and said, um, um, if you are the son of God, it's a diplomatic way to say prove it. If you are sure of that voice, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Please hear me. There are things God has said concerning us. This book is full of promises and truths backed by the integrity and the jealousy of God. 
there are things God has said that God is able to pick a man from the dunghill. You are not the first to come from a background where you were staying under, under a, a roofless house. It is not news. In this Bible, God lifted men from nothing and took them anywhere. It will not start from you. You are not the first to have an empty account. No, sir. You are not the first to be jobless. No, sir. You see, the things that are written at four times, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. Hope that if he did it yesterday, he would do it again. Are we together? Faith, persuasion. Hmm. That in a strange land, God lifted Joseph to become a prime minister. In a strange land, he lifted Daniel to become a prime minister through the reign of three kings. You are not the first to prosper or attempt to prosper in a land that is strange. The Bible already shows what God can do with such men. Apostle, nobody likes me. There was once a time a man called Jabez. The mother bore him in sorrow. You are not the first. But the Bible starts that book with the end of the story. And Jabez was more honorable. That means people can change their state. What is this bad luck on my life that drives good things? And then you go to scripture. Because what I say to one, I say to all. You can open it there and say, my name is not Jabez. But my experience makes me look like Jabez. And I can change it. What is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched his thigh and he blessed him. And the sun arose and he called that place Peniel, the face of God. Is God blessing us? Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters, God does not lie. Our lives are testimonies that when God talks to you, take him serious. When God tells you this year, I am lifting you. Don't sit down hope and say, God, are you aware that much? is No, 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 no. That kind of talk is unbelief. Did you not hear that God is able to transit a people overnight? It's in your Bible, by this time tomorrow. What is it about? Listen. God is not scratching his head wondering what to do with your life. Your problem is only an emergency to you, not to heaven. Please help me. You are who you are yesterday. Help me. What you say is what you do. That's a God that we serve. You never fail, you never change You are faithful till the end Faithful God, I worship you I worship you Listen, look at me. Faith makes you walk like life owes you. That you get up in the morning expecting to be favored. You get up in the morning. The Bible says he looked on them expecting to receive. Hallelujah. Faith is not many of this nonsense you see people do around. That's, that's why it doesn't work faith is an encounter with what god has said then your next assignment is to meditate up upon it until until the light enters you the entrance of thy word giveth light light 
you have understood listen please understand this all of the promises of god without exception are conditional let me repeat myself all of the promises of god without exception are conditional the cheapest thing we ever receive as believers is salvation and even that does not happen automatically there are people going to hell every day in spite of the fact that the substitutionary sacrifice is a reality because there is still a condition if thou shalt believe with your heart and then verbalize it by confessing with your mouth then that life becomes yours because the law is that when you believe with your heart romans 8 10 right verse 8 to 10 and confess with your mouth the lord jesus you shall be saved so you can hear the gospel and still go to hell the cheapest thing on earth still requires something from you listen to me when you act on the word you are not negating faith you are not negating the grace of god you are participating there is a participatory requirement to make the word of god come to pass many believers continue to cross their legs fold their arms just because you found it does not mean it will happen you will sit down and watch yourself grow old and yet the word of god does not work the word of god only works for those who walk it you must engage it it says work out your salvation with fear and trembling your own salvation so I give you an instance. I'm living a life of failure. I'm living a life of defeat. And I am tired. Then I go to God in prayer. And I begin to see all the promises that continue to show me that I have a great destiny in Christ. Now, finding it is not enough. I must meditate upon it. The end of meditation is knowing where your responsibility comes. If you have not found where your responsibility comes, your meditation is not over. Knowing what God has said is the A part of your meditation. The B part is what is my role in making this prophecy happen. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy. He meets a blind man and puts mud and says, go to Siloam. A blind man, how will he get there? He heals 10 lepers and says, if you believe I've healed you, get up by yourself with your own energy. Prove that you believe me by taking action. Right? Go and show yourself to the priest. That's a risk. You go and meet the priest. What if it does not happen? Your moving proves you believe. Not just your saying. Now, watch this. Listen. Listen. Sir, I'm going to call you Keep saying you are coming, but don't come. Stand up. What's your name, sir? Emmanuel. Let me show you what many people are doing. Emmanuel, this is for you. Come and receive it. I'm coming, but don't come. Are you seeing what they are doing? I'm coming. I will even come now. I'm saying come. I'm not playing games. This is not April Fool. This is for you. He says, I'm coming. You can even dance around and say, I'm coming and not come. And somebody from nowhere, come darling. And you say but they just gave birth to you last year i've been saying i'm coming since how many years is the one who takes the action that has faith please sit down the one who moves is the one who believed not the one who says i will move now i'm not saying speaking is wrong but that is not the only action required. God tells you, your job is in Lekki. If you believe it, get into the bus. Be on your way there. I know you say I'm stupid. That's why many people don't get breakthroughs. It is at the point of going. Listen. It says the wine not finished. It says fill six pots. Huh? Then he says, fetch that water. Start going to the rulers. Ah, my, my job, my reputation. What if I get to the ruler? I say, why are you here? I say, please. Um, somebody in the crowd told me that he's a miracle worker and that if I fetch six pots of water, 
every manifestation of faith you only rejoice at the end of the result the process is a risk let me spell faith for you r i s k that's the spelling of faith Spell, faith is not spelled f-a-i-t-h no the doers of faith know the real spelling of faith it's called r i s k that's it go and open the school and you put your hand on your head and say lord you mean it he says yes if you believe me you open a school that looks like a graveyard and you are surprised at the kind of people that come because god is not a man sit down we live in a very bless you darling god bless you we live in look at me we live in a very fearful risk averse now i'm not saying i'm not saying you just take risks that don't make sense are we together remember it is at the instance of his word if his word is not backing you better stay there because there will be catastrophic um consequences if it be thou bid me come and he said come the word of God comes. Faith cometh. When, when Pastor Amos Fenwa was telling me about this place, acquiring this property and the wisdom, I looked and I said, wow, truly, this man is not only a father and a patriarch, he truly is a man of faith. Every result only speaks in the end. Speaks in the end. I have sent you to be a great warrior a great media giant and you are sitting down there saying lord give me some guarantees now you will sit down there till you become old have you noticed that people who are audacious it looks like they will fall and fail but they will not sometimes it looks like they are always falling but god's jealousy protects them because they went at the instance of his word so even what would have killed you it is true based on the statistics that it should kill you but then his jealousy steps in and changes that calculation anything times god is what the answer is oh. whatever he says the answer is failure plus god is the answer he puts there anything plus god once you add god into an equation the calculation changes my limitation plus god you will be expecting the result called failure and you will be shocked to see what will be the final answer when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible say when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible hallelujah i believe in the power of god so what we're, we're walking faith here would soon round up the revelation and encounter with the word of god number two your meditation you don't just find it and start running no 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 it must be settled in your heart settled in your spirit are we together now Number three, the third step to manifesting faith. One is an encounter, two is meditation that brings understanding. It shows you the role you have to play. And then number three, actions of obedience. Not just action. Not just action. Actions of obedience. I told you that the end of your meditation is knowing the role you have to play to prove your partnership with the Spirit and your partnership with that word. If God wants to do it, he would do it. That's just a wise saying. It will never happen that way. Actions of obedience. 
actions of obedience actions of obedience oh god there is he that scattereth and withholdeth more than i mean there is he that scattereth and yet increases there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty i've been withholding that's why so i make up my mind that i'm going to sow but this is more than money i am acting on a revelation many people sow money that's why they don't get anything they are not acting on revelations there is no revelation that sponsors your action you just saw somebody coming to drop money and you too you followed believe me that's donation there's no life there because the sponsor of spiritual things is understanding it is more than the action the energy that powers action is understanding two people can lift up their hands one will get a response from heaven another will not because one lifted up his hand with understanding understanding is very important in all you're getting get understanding why am i doing this why should i do this for someone you just fast because you grew up knowing that every time you're in trouble fast and as much as it is it's a very emotional encounter but you will not get anything but another person understands the role of fasting in opening up your eyes to light then shall your light break forth the bible says and so you can go to fast now with understanding and in spite of the inconvenience your stomach is running asking you to feed it and you are saying stomach remain there i'm tired of where i am and suddenly light opens do this do this do that and that's the end of it faith faith the Bible says, let me show you one scripture. It says in 1 John chapter 5 from verse 4. 1 John, Apostle John is teaching us something about faith. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God already has victory over this cosmos it says and this is the victory it doesn't just produce victory it is the victory that overcometh the world even our conviction and the actions we take to support that conviction will always put you in a standpoint of victory hallelujah praise the lord everybody say i believe in god do you know there are many people who don't believe in God? They are only hoping he's not scamming them. You must settle it right here that God is not a man and he is able. You must settle it right here that God has the ability to lift me in this Lagos. Please look at me. Your, your land is a good land. You can move around hoping that one day, Lord, bring somebody to just like me. No, sir. No. When will I ever have land in Lagos? That kind of thinking, you will never have it. Even if you have a job, you'll be surprised that you will save. When you are almost getting the money, something will come and take you back. Because you really don't buy land with money. You buy land with faith and you buy land with favor they got not the land in possession by their own swords neither did their own arm save them don't let anybody bully you over land everybody met land on earth nobody brought land from his mother's womb the earth is the lord the real landlord is god and you can negotiate with him and he will surprise you and give you a portion of his domain for your possession listen i'm not stupid i know what i'm saying i've stopped sharing my testimony so that it doesn't look like arrogance i always want people to settle down and believe god because sometimes once you share some things they always appear like arrogance but God, remain you align yourself and say lord this year that after this conference it's called open doors it's not just the name of a convention my life should show it do you believe what i'm sharing with you can you spare me 10 minutes to teach you one more principle <laughs> No, 
no, we won't stay that long. Listen, these are the systems of the kingdom. You see, when you say a man is powerful, or when you say people have results, it's not their face, it's not their size, it's the weightiness of the exactitude of spiritual knowledge that supports their results. You see that? The law of faith. Let's touch one more. That causes doors to be opened. Ah, goodness. The law of favor. The law <laughs> of favor. Jesus is Lord. Someone's life is about to change. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Listen now. The law of favor. Exodus 30, Exodus 3 and verse 21. Let's just discuss it quickly. Please promise your pastor you will use these things you are learning. And promise him that you will return with the result to say, sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This thing will give predictability to your life. You will play life like a chess. You know how people play chess? Yes. God is connecting the dots to our lives. And I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when he goes he shall not go empty listen the giver of favor is god but he uses system sit down psalm 89 verse 17 three scriptures psalm 89 verse 17 please help us media read it if you're a christian for thou art the glory of their strength and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted see a horn is a symbol of authority that when you see a man rise regardless of background it is not just because some people are lucky please hear this there is a deep mystery that is responsible for the fearful rising of men. It vetoes backgrounds. It vetoes limitations. Just remain at verse 17. Just stay there. And in thy horn, thy favor shall my horn, my authority, my influence be exalted. One last scripture. Psalms 102 and verse 13. Karish kubaras Thou shall arise. When God arises, this is serious business. There are not many instances in the Bible where God has had to arise. But on this matter, O oh God, arise. And have mercy upon Joshua Selman for the time. So favor has timing. The time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come sit down arise favor is the number one reason people succeed in life but respectfully speaking and i'm saying this because i'm only using this platform i know god is speaking to the body of christ believers hear me the reason why many believers do not experience favor is in their definition of favor the way we define favor is why we don't experience it the average person defines favor as unmerited access is that true that description is not should come to everybody after 24 hours sit down Now listen, 
I always put a disclaimer as I teach. Don't go and harass any pastor, harass any book, harass any church to say, ah, I just brought a new revelation. You have been teaching nonsense. Don't do that. The spirit of the Christ is the spirit of love. And I know your pastor has mentored you to be people who understand the character of the spirit. The goal is not to go tearing down people and write all kinds of insulting posts. I heard me say it for many of you who listen to me. Who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. It doesn't matter how many people hate you. That's not a problem. Hatred does not kill. But who likes you? A king likes a village girl. And suddenly she becomes queen. In this kingdom, who likes you matters. You can be in Lagos and someone looks at you and says, I like you. I want to help you. No strings attached. Are we together now? The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is loyalty to the heart of man. The proof of favor is not money. You can have money and not have favor. Wisdom also gives money. Diligence also gives money. But the real proof of favor is loyalty to the heart of a generation. When people look at you and love you and will go to any length to support what you represent, the favor of God is upon you. It was because Jesus, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, and Jesus increased. Believers, hear me. Jesus increased, Luke 2, 52, in wisdom, in stature, and he saw the importance of favor. He had to increase in favor with God. You can have favor with God and not have favor with men. If you have favor with God, you will have encounters. You will see angels. Mary was highly favored and she saw angels. She had all kinds of things. But you will be broke, you will suffer, the doors will remain closed. The doors are not closed in heaven, they are closed on earth. So you need favor with both God and man. Go and lose the colt and bring him. And when the owner asks for it, tell him the master had need. If favor was not on Jesus, you will be surprised what that man would have done to Jesus. Nobody works hard and ties his coats. You come and lose it because you have a crusade. Who do you think you are? It is favor that is on you. That will make someone stand up and say, please, what can I do to increase you? He said, God is, he said, no, no, no. I, I, I owe you. Please believe what I am telling you. No strings attached. I'm interested in your ministry. I'm interested in your project. How can I help? Please, can I pay the school fees of your children till university? Give me that honor. And you are there wondering and saying, are you sure that there is no? He said, no. No. I will give these people favor in the sight. In the sight. Listen. Pastor, sir, I prayed for one month for the grace for favor to come upon my life because I studied ministry and I studied living and I found out if I don't have favor, things will be very bad and I did not want to compromise to get to a point where because of pressure, you will dapple into things that are ungodly because you are trying to feed your belly. I cried to the God of heaven. The day it came, I said, this is it. Like a magnet, everybody looks at you and you become their delight. They look for ways to see that ministry is easy. They look for ways to see that you are lifted. Hallelujah. You need favor to achieve your goals. Let me show you quickly how to activate favor. But are you getting blessed? favor the first key to activate favor is honor please write it down honor the first key that activates favor is honor the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their uniqueness 
you are far from favor when you dishonor men you are far from favor when you dishonor god you are far from favor when you dishonor principles honor when a door that was open today closes tomorrow dishonor closed it dishonor is the trivializing the downplaying of the sacrifices, listen carefully, of the spiritual investment of man. When you, when the devil wants to shut the door of favor, he will give you an attitude of sarcasm, an attitude that downplays the sacrifice and the 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 uniqueness of man. Oh. Pastor Amos Fenway, uh -huh, he's a great man. What is there? Is he the only man of God? You see, that attitude, no matter how you pray, that attitude of dishonor has already closed the door. You will weary yourself in front of that door. I have watched with wonder and shock across the body of Christ. I have seen pastors, apostles, prophets, great people, anointed, but you can trace the doors that are closed towards them. There are, this is why our generation of young people don't move forward. Our extent of dishonor to parents, dishonor to people, every young man who just carries anointing is lousy, is sarcastic, sees an old woman and an old man and treats them like children. And we continue to break spiritual laws and spend our lifetime paying for it. Dishonor is terrible. It's worse than a bomb blast. Are we together? He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Honor. Honor is powerful. Some of you have parents that the grace upon their life is that nothing finishes. They may not be millionaires, but you've seen that grace. You will never ask mama for anything and she'll say, I don't have in spite of the fact that she's not educated there is always a grace you are working with an oil company but you still say mama can you help me with hundred thousand and she will open one basket and bring it out it's a grace it's not just savings you have not honored that grace that's why it did not come upon you and in spite of the fact that you are doing a white collar job blue collar job whatever kind of color you find out that you are not making progress The anointing of God is hidden in men, but it takes honor to allow it flow towards you. You see every rich man and you just said, look at them, thieves. This is our share of uh, national cake. No, I, you don't know the story of that person. That person came to Lagos, slept under a bridge, continued to walk the principles of the kingdom. Listen, the palace has a way of eroding scars, but make no mistakes, they are there every great man has scars and if they are honest enough they will not only to tell you stories they will show you the scars let no man trouble me he says for i bear my body the mark i didn't jump the school of the spirit i went through it oh why is this businessman thriving like this maybe he was just lucky why is this man of god i'm sure they are just lucky and you shut the door Favor is controlled by honor. You will never hear me dishonor any man of God in the body of Christ. You will never hear me stand on anybody's pulpit and tear down the relevance of that church. I will never, not this church, not any church. No, I will teach truths. I will, within the limitation of the apostolic office, I will see that the body of Christ comes to the coordinate of truth, but I will administer it in love. As I'm teaching you now, I teach with a deep sense of reverence and honor to you. Because I do not know what grace you are carrying as you are seated there. You may not even be aware, but the grace is still there. I can honor my way to receiving that grace while I am teaching. Show me a man that understands honor and I show you a man who does never shut for. No. 
there is a grace that comes with honor it makes you likable Beulah, Hefziba. people look at you and want to be around you they will run around themselves to see that they connect to yourself listen if you are alone and you are struggling it's proof that dishonor continues to close open doors in your life when I found that law I said this is it I don't dishonor men I truly do not you wanted to marry the lady but the day you went to see her parents you were acting as if they are stupid people and the father was just watching you dressed like an arm robber looked like look like look like an irresponsible boy they didn't say you should sit down you sat down you didn't even carry anything you carried a bottle of wine holding it in your hand as if you are selling it and you and the parents watch you i'm showing you what dishonor does to our generation they they won't say you are stupid they will respect you when you are done they say it's all right um we have seen you you will hear from us next thing you see an invitation card of their daughter to a proper honorable responsible young man same thing with preachers God grants you an opportunity to platforms that you know that you should not even be there. And you run down everybody and make it look as though it were your power. You run down every man of God. There is no discernment of cadres. And that door exits you never to open for you again. When a door opened yesterday and does not open tomorrow, there is an explanation. This honor closed it. There are people who are invited to many churches and ministries only once and they never invite them again. The message was powerful, but the persona did not carry on. Are we together? Number two, the second key that activates honor is called value. Value. I mean that activates favor. Value. What is value? A measure of your contribution. A measure of your usefulness. Your skill. A measure of your productivity. Life was designed to work based on a reward system. If you are valuable, I've always said it that most people say preachers are blessed for doing nothing. And I say, no, 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 no. We are not blessed for doing nothing. There is an explanation as to the blessings of God. It's just the nature of how our value is dispensed that makes it look like it's nothing. Are we together now? Every man of God is blessed because he's a supplier of value. Just because the value is spiritual in context does not mean it is not. It's real value. You are shaping the understanding of people. You are connecting them to faith. You are opening their eyes to see you are constructing a destiny for them based on an information that is referenced on the word of God. That is value. Are we blessed? Listen to me. The Bible says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he leaves you with an assurance that he will stand before kings. He will not stand before mean men. You must make up your mind that to attract favor, you are going to be exceptionally valuable. And value is twofold. First, your virtue or character. Then second, your transactable skill. Don't limit value to just skill. There are many people who are not well behaved but are skillful. Ask any wealthy man here. Ask anybody who is a leader, a company holder, a man of God here. Nobody wants a gifted rebel. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Are we together now? Your virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. Virtue is value. Virtue is not just something for women. You know, when they say a virtuous person, you just imagine a woman who wants to marry. No, 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 no. Virtue has nothing to do with women and marriage. It is the closeness. Virtues of respect. Virtues of discipline. Virtues of diligence. There are many, many indisciplined people who want to be successful. The discipline to be consistent in prayer. The discipline to study. Are we together now? The discipline to tell yourself, if I need to fast, I fast. Favor, that's why, that's why when people say favor is unmerited, those who have it just nod their head and say, no, you got it wrong. Virtue. 
that you can greet people. Do you know you can get a job just for being respectful? Good morning, sir. Say, who are you? This young man. Well, sir, I'm, I'm trusting God for a job. Really? No, you're a young man. Come. And that's it. Somebody's prayer point of two weeks was answered through the communication of virtue. Praise the name of the Lord. And then finally, we have to pray. We'll deal with that in the night. But there is a grace called the Esther anointing. Huh. The Esther anointing is a grace. Esther chapter 2 from verse 14 and 15. Alagbara You are the mighty God And you are so about to change please don't miss the vigil esther chapter 2 the holy spirit opened my eyes to the fact that people don't just rise from shushan to the throne there is an anointing the bible says when vashti was banished are we bible students there was a vacancy listen ladies listen everybody i show you the key that takes people from shushan to the palace there is an anointing. I call it the Esther anointing. They gathered young virgins from everywhere and Mordecai decided to give his little girl a try. Esther is together with other happening city ladies. And Haggai tells her, let me share with you a secret. I know the king. I've worked with the king for many years. I know the kind of woman that the king wants. Don't mind all these things you see other women doing. I will give you an ointment. Rub it on your body for one year. Keep rubbing that ointment every day. I give you one with aloes for six months. I give you another one. After one year, go before the king. You will be his queen. And then the Bible says, In the evening she went and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women to the custody of that name and the king's chamberlain which kept the concubines she came in unto the king no more except the king delighted in her and that she were called by name you know he was explaining what would happen 15 and now when the turn when it was the turn of esther the daughter of abihel the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in unto the king she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed, he had shown her a formula when you read. And just that oil was what she kept rubbing. And then, read the B part if you're a Christian. One, to read. And Esther obtained favor. Here it is again. In the sight of all men that looked upon her. Hold on. Do you know how many people look at you in a day? If all of them favor you, you will not ask for money again in your life. What kind of grace is it that comes upon a man that the moment you look at them, you are compelled to be interested in their lives? It's like a spell. This charm-like approach. Verse 17. Not even the king could resist this grace and the king loved esther above all the women before esther came there were others he was looking at but not when esther comes he already said okay note this note this this one looks close but here comes a young hebrew girl a village girl with nothing but an anointing 
she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than so it's true that before you came five people were already being considered for the job already their names were down but not when you show up place favor on your certificate and present it if all you present is a piece of paper you will not get anything add to your piece of paper favor add to your contract proposal favor if all you have is just design and quotations you will not get anything not in this wicked world than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti favor is a law that opens doors opens gates opens cities apostle is because I've never had the opportunity to be in the government house I'm so skilled unfortunately there are times that you can interpret dreams but you will need somebody who is already in the palace to send you an invitation it is favor that connects you when I found this key pastor I cried for one whole month praying Lord the kind of grace you have put upon my life if I do not have the help and the favor of men I may not go far and so I ask you favor I prayed this when it came I said thank you Jesus there is no territory that closes against me it is true there is a grace there is a grace who is interested in you who is interested in what you carry there are people who will look at you and say sir what do you do you say i'm a businessman what do you supply he said for some i i want to introduce you to somebody we have been looking for someone like you whereas that person's cousin still does the same business and he will not introduce that person favor is powerful is there any man in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake call ziba for me and the bible says they brought ziba and he said is there anyone left and ziba said in lodeba there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth, but he will not do you any good. He's a crippled man. It was not his fault. A midwife malhandled him and he became crippled. He sent for, I think that should be First Samuel, Second Samuel 9 or something like that. Yes. When you read everything, he now sent for Mephibosheth. When Mephibosheth came, he said, I am a dog. What will I do in your presence? And he said, Ziba, you are your sons. Your assignment is to farm. Farm, bring food for this man. But as for you, you will eat with me here. Go to verse 10 and see a very fearful statement in verse 10. He said, Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servant shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the first fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy son, shall eat bread all the way at my table. Read the last sentence. Dangerous statement. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. And yet they didn't choose one of them. 15 sons. 20 servants and the king ignored them said go and get me one crippled person a man has 15 sons 20 servants you left all my sons and you sent me to Lodeba to bring a crippled man please rise up on your feet i'd like you to find a prayer partner for this hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart.
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.